Hey YouTube, so today's video I'm going to be giving you an update on the uh, Milwaukee sprayer, the M18. Some of the things that I like, some of the things I had to modify to make this the ultimate sprayer. Now a little bit about me, if you haven't seen the rest of my channel, um, I've kind of been pushing more towards the lawn care side of things. And I do weed spraying, fertilizing, um, porch cleaning even, uh, all with this sprayer. And I have to say, some of the negatives and some of the pros um, in this video, or to kind of make it more realist, um, the negatives, uh, it clogs a lot. So the old filter that I had on it uh, was super fine, so it would clog almost every time you go to use it. You go clean it, and you got stuff in there, you don't wanna get your hands in there, cause you know, either it's cancer causing, uh, chlorine or whatever. Super high concentrated things, getting on your skin, and your skin's a big absorption, uh, absorbs a lot. So you don't wanna get your hands in there, your filter clogs. Um, so, kind of things I've learned to bypass that, um, is I pop this old filter out, and I got a little screen because my dogs, they're crazy. Got a little screen cover um, left over. And what I did is I took the old filter out, which was in here. And then I put the screen around and just zip tied it. Never clogged. And it's just enough. Enough so nothing big can get in there. But it gets great suction. Now I wish they came out with a way to put a tube in there so you can get in the corner. Because once you get under that gallon mark, you have to really unleash the straps get into that corner of where the filter uh suction is and it kind of sucks um that sucks for me it's not too big of a problem but once you got to get low your pressure is gone you're like oh crap i gotta you know i under the one gallon mark gotta loosen up my straps so the water gets to that one side kind of wish they did a a hose contraption that got into the corner and put a filter on the end of that but that's just one little thing that I had a problem with the other thing um, that I had a problem with was the t-jet so the t-jet was all plastic now the other nozzle that they gave you which was more of a spot spray nozzle um, that was brass but I'm Happy to say I found a solution for that too. I think it's called T-Jet uh, Nozzles. A lot of YouTubers use it. But what it is, is it's a... Definitely needs to get cleaned. The person that used this last did <laughs> clean it very well. Um, it's plastic on the top. Says T-Jet on it. Yep, T-Jet. And it uses stainless steel on the inside. So you don't have to worry about the plastic breaking on the inside or getting corroded. Because it's just stainless steel. Now those were the only two negatives I have about this product. Once I fix that, man, this thing is just a breeze. It's so easy to use. Puts down the application smoothly. You don't have to worry about it clogging. Don't have to worry about um, losing your pressure or your fan spray not being as clear. Now I will say the plastic fan spray they did have on there worked amazingly. It just over time, it started to, uh, I guess like I had a piece of thing that got clogged in there just by me lightly trying to get it out. Then it ruined the tea spray. So stainless steel all the way. I'd get the tea jet. Uh, I think it's like eight bucks on Amazon. Works with the model. The thing is a lot of people don't say what models it works with. And it's usually the Chaplin brands or, you know, what people use or the pump sprayers. But for the Milwaukee sprayer, it does work and it works well with. Um, the other pros about this sprayer, I mean, you can get probably over 50 applications with just the battery. I put, I usually put a 1.5 amp in there, but this time I put a three. And I mean, I had someone go use it. They're spraying their porch, their house, um, just everything, uh, I mean, around their place. And it took them about two days to spray had this 3.0 he didn't tell me exactly how many applications he had to use I know the first day he bought six gallons of uh, spray so this is a four gallon tank it was supposed to be 50% mixture so right there you know that's three I think the next day he bought 12 um, so you're looking at another I don't know 
six, so about nine, ten applications. And I did not have this thing fully charged, um, and it's only halfway on the battery. And this is a 3.0 high output battery. I mean, these things just last forever. I mean, I like to keep my batteries charged up, but I like to use every single one of my chargers or every single one of my batteries so that they have a longer life. So I usually split out my 1.5s with just the tank. The high outputs, I don't notice a difference on the batteries for them. And a lot of them say you really shouldn't put high output batteries unless it's a device that uses in the high output, like your leaf blower, um, your impact drivers. And even then, they say you really don't need it. Um, but put a high output on this thing, and I mean, it just never dies, goes on forever. You could put a bigger battery in it, but this thing's heavy alone um but that's really the only two things i have negatives and pros about uh tank works great once you fix the filter get to your new t-set uh nozzle which you don't need but the filter i would do right away um it sucks because you're spending like 350 bucks just for the sprayer so you know it's it's not the best price ever for what you're you can get a ryobi you can get all of those sprayers now, I will say Ryobi seems cheaper. Uh, the DeWalt seem cheaper. The other brands just seem cheaper. They don't seem as comfortable on the straps. I mean, if you look at this thing, you can take off the tank, put any kind of tank on there. It's great. But I mean, if you just look at this thing, this, it's got your waist strap. It's got this nice, um, very, I don't know what kind of material this is. I'm not a material genius, but a very strong, durable, comfortable straps. Um, and then you have your back plate here, which helps you hold with the nozzle, but keeps it off your back. You've got these padded um, straps. And the great part about the waist strap, you're gonna wanna use that. It takes all the pressure off your shoulders. And then when it starts to get low, you just loosen up one side so the backpack will go a little bit more closer to where the filter suction's at. And I'm telling you, this is phenomenal. You're gonna love it. 350 bucks a little pricey. I will wait till it's on sale But I mean I could use this thing all the time um, I have no complaints about it other than those two things and if I was Milwaukee, I'd go back to the drawing board find a way to get a, a Tube that goes to like the bottom to get a really good suction out of it and maybe form it so the water kind of goes to one side and get that tube down there but other than that that's not an issue most companies are having these problems too they just do like the small little filter i just showed you in the corner they don't do the tube and it just it sucks but if you just change that filter for because i've had this thing for like two years now i believe if you just change that filter it's going to be a game changer um the t-jet nozzle i just got this year just because I've been spraying a lot more yards, now that I'm doing it as like a little side gig, um, spraying a lot more yards, so eventually it got clogged with something because I was dealing with the filter problem, and then I fixed the filter problem, and then that got broken. So biggest thing you can do is just change out the filter. I'm sure your nozzle will last forever as long as you don't damage it, and you'll be fine. Um, but that's it for this video, really. Nothing else I have to add, nothing else I have to recommend other than just take care of your device, um, wash it out every time you use it, prime it. Priming it just means get the handle. So when you put product in, prime it, put it into the tank, filters through. So as soon as you spray, you're getting the application on. Um, my next video will probably be some recommended weed killers that I've been using to really uh, change the game um, when it comes to killing people's yards i mean i have great results and i'm talking my my mom's yard for years weeds i don't want to waste my own money i want to take care of my yard which i've killed redone completely um, with perennial ryegrass and i'm like man mom you got a lot of weeds you got a lot of, you know a lot of things let's do this did for my wife's dad's house too and i mean the results are crazy after two weeks i mean two weeks you'll see some weeds that look like okay they got a little dent they didn't die went back two weeks later and it's completely just just dead um the only thing was crabgrass which crabgrass is a very hard thing to control especially in july when it's matured um so i bought another product uh, which you guys can take a look at i think it's worth it 
as soon as I sprayed in my yard, because uh, I redid my front yard in May, which is a horrible time to do it, but May, and I had some crabgrass coming because I got some dirt um, to level things out a little bit, and I had the hardest time trying to kill it, buying the stuff at the store, because I'm like, man, my good stuff won't kill it because it doesn't have the lock or whatever. I don't really know how to pronounce it, um, which does, and it doesn't have a high concentrate. So um, stay tuned for that video. If you want to know how to destroy your weeds, get it fastly done, and control those crabgrass. Um, this is the time to do it so that this fall you're ready to put down seed and I'll show you another application that you can put down to prevent weeds from coming up, especially from the seeds that you buy. They're not weed free, they do have weeds in them. So stay tuned and that's all I have for now.